Good to have you with us again. Today we will be building a front loading washing machine stand. Now this is a very heavy duty unit. Um, I don't know if um, you're on a good enough angle, but it's 32 kilos in weight and uh, very substantial and can actually hold up to 130 kilograms. Um, now some may ask why on earth you would want to hold 130 kilograms when a washing machine would be nowhere near that but that is actually not true um, the washing machine and I'll put it on the screen now for you uh, weighs in the vicinity of 70 between 70 and 75 kilograms and it's a 9 kilogram wash load so factor in 9 kilograms factor in maybe 15 to 20 litres of water at any one rinse cycle or any one cycle I should say uh, and it's one kilogram per litre of water so if there were 20 litres of water in there that's 20 kilograms at the nine kilograms of clothes that's 30 kilograms the washing machines over 70 kilograms is already a hundred kilograms so they need to be very heavy duty and this one certainly is now I'll be doing a special treat with this one. I'll walk you through the build um, using just sequences of photos and video. I'll use photos for the easy bit and video for the more difficult bits, but I'll be doing my own customization on this particular build. So make sure you watch through to the end and maybe you'll like that customization part of it and if you don't already have one of these and you decide to build one you might want to do the same or you might already own one of these and decide oh that's not a bad idea i'll do the same to my existing one so anyway enough talking let's get started <gasps> Cookies!
So we're at the final stage of our front loader washing machine stand build and this is where we're going to do our customization. The pack comes with these adjustable feet and there's a housing that goes into the wood and it's threaded on the inside and you just adjust these feet uh, to the height that you want. But what we're going to do is replace the feet with wheels. Whoops, that's rolling away. Now this is a pack of four. Uh, it was actually cheaper to get a pack of four than it was to buy them individual. And these are quite heavy duty, as you can see. They hold up to, and it says it on here, 70 kilograms per caster. Two of them are non-rotating, as in they're in a fixed position and two of them are rotating and the rotating ones have brakes as well. The advantage of also going this way is that it'll give us some extra height. What I found is that the smaller wheels or casters used plastic as the wheel portion and because we are having a washing machine, the dryer is not so bad but the washing machine has a spin cycle of 1,400 revolutions, and that's quite a lot. Our old washing machine had 1,000. So you want something that's going to be stable, and these larger wheels are actually made of rubber. So going to be able to hold the unit on the ground a lot better. So what I need to do is I need to drill the holes into the base, which I won't be doing in this room. I'll do it out the back. Um, I don't have much room, so I won't bring the camera in, but I will show you the end result and how we're going to fit these wheels.
So unfortunately we've run into a little bit of an issue while building this. The actual leg itself is threaded incorrectly and it won't screw in. Now I was able to contact Bedford Furniture and they were really good and arranged to express post me some replacement. They were really good about it, just took my name, address and no questions, no fuss uh, sending them. So hopefully I should receive those today. But in waiting on those, I did notice something with the wheels. Now I'll show you, this one's actually already been fixed and you can, if I try and wiggle that, you'll see that does not move. I'll put the microphone up near the other leg, like so, and if I grab that, you can see how it moves and that noise. Now I'm gonna guarantee you after a 20 minute drying cycle, you're not going to want to be listening to that for 20 minutes that's for sure so what i've done is i've bought these washers and they suit uh, half inch or m12s and i took the wheel off and i placed them in between here now they don't spin as easy, you can see that spins and then if I spin this one it just comes to a stop but that doesn't really matter because it's all about just stopping that vibration. You can see this one just does not make move at all. And this one here shakes. So I'll finish completing all four wheels and uh, but I just wanted to show you that because if you're following this build and want to do it yourself that's something to watch out for because that'll stop a lot of noise during the wash. So the unit's all finished now. Um, so I just want to go through a couple of things before we turn it on its wheels and put the drawer in. One of the important things when putting the wheels on and, and looking at keeping the structural integrity of the unit, uh, this panel here is the panel that supports all the weight. The, what is the top of the unit uh, puts its weight on here. And then, of course, the washing machine, or in this particular case, our dryer, will sit on the roof. Because the wheel is actually sitting right over the main load-bearing panel here, that means this takes all the weight as well. So if this wheel was, let's say, in the, more in the centre, then, then the weight would be put onto the base of the unit. And we certainly didn't want that. So all the wheels line up beautifully. Now, if we look at it side on, you can see this being the front of the unit. Now, these wheels rotate like so. And you can see that even when it's at the back, there won't be any loss of balance uh, in, in that the unit won't tip forward. Rear wheels also right at the back and there's no way that this unit is going to tip back or forward. You can see that the bolt is below the runner for the jaw. Um, so that shouldn't get in the way at all. And the rear bolts there are actually behind the jaw runner. So again, won't get in the way at all. So we'll flip this over and we're almost done.
Now I thought before I show you how the washing machine stand performs under load, I'll just show you some changes that I needed to make. Because these washing machine stands are in a sense mass produced, there's always going to be some inconsistencies. Now earlier on you may have heard when the jaw was opening and closing that there was a bit of a bang. And I tracked it down to, you can see the screw that holds in the rail just here. Let me get you a better, yeah, just, just here. I noticed that the ones in the center were just banging up against the wheels in the rail. And so I ended up removing them on both sides and now there's no more banging as the wheel goes through. The other change I made was in regards to these washers. Now silly me, and it's my fault entirely, when I drilled through the melamine, I drilled from this way up, which caused the melamine to sort of break away on this side. Um, it's very difficult to drill through melamine and have a nice clean cut. And what was happening without the washers, the, the head of this bolt was actually kind of cutting in to the wood. So to play it safe, I just put a washer in between so that the head of the bolt now rests on the washer and the washer has a nice clean grip of the melamine. Final thing I needed to do was put a washer in between this guide rail and the frame. What was happening was the door was vibrating from left to right and the way to stop that was just to put one washer on just the left side of the rail and the right side of the rail did not require one and now the drawer is very stable. You can see the drawer now goes in without making any noise. I shake the door left and right it does not move at all so that is nice and secure. If we do a bit of a measure, you can see that the wheels increase the height by about five and a quarter inches, bringing the entire stand height to 20 inches. This extra height really comes in handy when it comes to transferring clothes from the washer to the dryer, not to mention unloading or loading either machine. I'm six foot tall and as you can see, apart from a few socks trying to make a daring escape for freedom, I really don't have to bend over much to move the clothes from the washer to the dryer. So we can't do all this without showing you how the stand performs in use. So at the moment we're in the middle of a wash cycle. show you how steady that stand is. Now you might be able to hear as the cycle turns off and on. And there we go, you can see it just doesn't affect it at all. It is rock solid. So we're currently in the highest spin cycle at the moment. Uh, so you can see on the display 1400 RPM. Uh, you can probably hear it in the background here. She's uh, spinning pretty quick. I just want to show you how it affects the stand from the highest speed. What we'll do is we'll look in between the two oh, in between the two stands so that you can get a comparison. The one on the right is the dryer, uh, which is not currently in use, so you can compare how much it shakes to the static stand. Here we go, you can hear it slowing down. So let's have a look.
So I've put the dryer in pause mode. I'll just turn that on. Whoop. I love how the light in the dryer turns on. Now if we have a look. The washer's on the left, so it's not in use at the moment, the washing machine. And that's the dryer on the right. And you can see that just does not move at all. And because the dryer is just spinning at a constant speed, it never really shakes. So after all that, let's see the reason why we did this to begin with, and that's portability. If you live in an apartment or a unit, or any place that's laundry space is scarce, it would be nice to be able to wheel the washing machine into place when you need it, and then just roll it away when you're finished, either hiding it in a cupboard or any spare space you have. But there are plenty of places around the world where a washing machine is kept in a kitchen or a small cupboard, which really limits the size of the washing machine you can have. So a setup like this may come in really handy. Well, this brings us to the end of the video. I hope you found it entertaining, informative and helpful. If you did find this video helpful, please consider hitting that like button. It really does help out the channel and I certainly appreciate it, but it also helps the YouTube algorithm push this video out to other people who are looking for something similar. I'll leave links to the Bedford Furniture website for you, but also links to where you can buy this particular washing machine stand. Now, if you're in other countries, I've got to say, I did try and have a look on Amazon and I couldn't really find anything that was similar to this, not anything in a flat pack anyway. What I suggest is maybe have a look around your local hardware store as well as Google it. Uh, and what'll happen is the search results will be based on your area. And finally, if you want to see more easy DIY projects, please consider hitting that subscribe button too. Thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.